Hello, Adolfo from Portainer here, and in this video, we're going to learn how to deploy Portainer on Micro K8 and using the OpenEBS storage technology developed for Kubernetes. I encourage you to check their website and learn a bit about their project. It's a very interesting storage technology that I personally like a lot. Okay, so let's check how this is done. I'm going to start by showing you the requirements. You basically need at least three machines because OpenEBS does a replica of your storage pods because that's how it sort of works um, at least three times. Uh, you can reduce that or increase that, but I'm just going to use the default um, settings that is of, of three nodes. And I'm going to start by deploying micro K8s on all these three machines. Okay. And because it takes a little while, I'll be back as soon as it's finished. Okay, then now we have all uh, three machines running uh, version 1.21 stable of micro K8s. And I want to um, add the other two nodes to the main node here. And let's use the micro K8s add node. I copy this output and I run it on the first machine but I have to generate it again because it's it runs only once it works only once you cannot copy the same output for every machine you're going to add to the node um, so let's give it some time it takes a while and I'll be back as soon as the cluster is up and running okay so all three nodes have joined the cluster um, I have this little trick where I add the micro K8 space kubectl command as an alias on my dot bash underscore alias file. So with this, I don't need to keep typing micro K8 kubectl. It's running as an alias and that um, helps me a lot. So I'm going to do a kubectl get nodes to see if they're all ready. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do is enable the iSCSI driver on all three nodes. This is required for OpenEBS. Okay, right. And once you've done this, you don't need these uh, two terminals anymore. You can close the other nodes terminals. You won't use them anymore, so I'll just, I'll just close them here. Okay, so now let's start by enabling the plugins that we need for micro k8s uh, for this deployment as you can see i'm enabling rbac dns open ebs and storage i'm not enabling portainer yet and i'll show you very soon why so let me hit here enter and uh, leave it running it takes some time so i'll be back as soon as this is finished okay so you'll notice that open ebs does this start right away so if i do a kubectl get pod namespace open ebs it's going to say the namespace does not exist so you might want to leave it up with the watch command here oh sorry you have to in this case watch does not read aliases so you have to put micro k8s before here the kubectl command with watch and as soon as it shows up and all the um, OpenEBS pods are running, we can continue with the tutorial. So I'll leave it there running and still we start seeing some pods being deployed. Okay, so things um, started showing up here with the OpenEBS pods. So I'll be back as soon as all these pods are up and running. Okay, so my OpenEBS deployment is um, concluded, is finished. Now, um, let me clear the screen and show you the storage classes that we have on this Kubernetes cluster. We have two. Um, actually, we have several, but really the ones that we're going to use or we want to use are um, the ones marked as default. But when you deploy storage on MicroK8 as a plugin, Obviously, the micro K8's host path storage class is set as default, and we want to change that because we want to use 
the OpenEBS Java default as our default storage class. So this is quite easy. All we have to do is patch our storage class um, microk8's host path here. I'm patching it um, as false to a default class. Okay, let's run kubectl get a storage class again. So I do not have a default storage class anymore on this cluster, but I need one for partainer. And I'm doing this because I want to switch from the default micro K8s to OpenEBS. And now what I'm doing here is I'm setting OpenEBS Java default as my default class storage class. True here. Okay, done. Right, kubectl get storage class. The reason I had to switch this is because if you leave two, you will not be able to deploy Portainer. It's going to complain. So now I can deploy Portainer. And now because OpenBS is replicating containers to deploy Portainer, it takes a while also. So I'm going to do a watch kubectl get pod minus n portainer leave it there leave it there oh again same thing sorry and leave it there until it starts um running okay so now we have portainer up and running as you can see it took roughly two minutes and 10 seconds more or less now i'm going to add two more very interesting plugins that i like a lot ingress and metal lb Ingress for, um, for as an ingress controller and metal OB for load balancing. Okay, you will notice that metal OB will ask for an IP range that you can define. What I usually do is I make sure that I have an advanced routing rule on my main gateway or router of my network that points this IP range or um, 192.168.10.0. Uh, to the main IP address of my node. In this case, the IP address of this node is, let's see, IPA uh, show EMP 0S3. Okay, the IP address of this node is 1051.160. So any request to this IP address range will be routed to this IP address. That is the IP address of my main node. Okay, now let's check if the uh, Ingress controller plugin has been deployed successfully. Yes, it has. Now let's check the same for our Metal LB plugin. Okay, there you go. It's up and running. Okay, so now we're not going to use the terminal anymore. We're going to finish deploying Portainer um, on our web browser. I'm going to close this and I'm going to move slightly to the left here and you will see why soon okay so the IP address is one seven one oh sorry ten fifty one one sixty now it's important to mention that portainer uh, as when deployed as a plugin uh, on micro k8s the will run on port thirty seven 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 so make sure you put the IP address of your main node and the port 3777. I like to change the username for my first admin user to Joe. I think admin is too obvious. The second step here is to connect the Portainer instance to the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, now I'm going to enable the external load balancer, and that is Metal LB. I'm going to configure the Ingress controller. The default Ingress class name for the micro K8 uh, Ingress plugin is public. And the type is Nginx. And I'm going to enable the open EBS Java default storage that we define as our default storage class for this Kubernetes cluster. Okay, I'm going to save the configuration. And now I have my endpoint here. And I can see is running three nodes. And I'm going to now deploy two applications, a database and a front end to this database. One will be published 
using the Metal LB plugin, and the other one will be published using the Ingress controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a resource pool. I'm going to call this resource pool DB. I'm not going to uh, define any resource assignments for now. Turn this off. What I, what I will do is enable the allow users to use this Ingress. So I have a host defined on my DNS called DB node zero. And I'm going to enable the redirect publish routes to the root in the application. Create the resource pool. OK. Now I'm going to add a database. The database is going to be MySQL. Oh, it's MySQL. I like to use the Ubuntu image. The resource pool is DB. I'm going to put it under stack called DB also. When you deploy MySQL under Kubernetes, you have to define the environment variable of the MySQL root password. In this case, I'm going to define it as DB1234. Um, yes, persistent folders. Yes, var lib mysql, just 10 gigs is enough. Right. And I'm going to select here in publishing the application as load balancer. I know that the port for mysql is 3306. And I'm going to use the same port for the load balancer port 3306. And I'm going to deploy this application. Okay. So my SQL is here being deployed. You can check the deployment status by clicking on the application name and checking here in the events. It shows the status of the deployment. And here I have the IP address already assigned by Metal LB for this uh, application. That is 192.168.10.10. I'm going to copy this IP address while I leave my SQL being deployed because I'm now going to deploy the PHP my admin front end for this database. PHP my admin, PHP my admin. Under the resource pool DB, maybe under the stack DB for PHP my admin, the PM, PMA underscore host variable. I will use the IP address defined by Meta OB for that database that is being deployed. But instead of load balancer or any of these two options, internal or cluster, I'm going to use Ingress. I'm going to publish port 80 because I know that's the port that PHP my admin uses to the root of the application. I'm going to deploy this application. So here, as you can see, I'm using a combination of uh, Metal LB with uh, the Ingress controller. Let's check here on stack how these are these two are doing. My SQL is already deployed and PHP my admin is almost finished. Let's refresh this. Okay, PHP my admin is also uh, deployed. I'm going to click on port mappings. So now I'm going to click on this HTTP route that is being managed by the Ingress controller. It should take me to the PHP my admin front end. I'm going to type in the root user and the password I assigned to the MySQL database. Click on go. And there you go. I successfully managed to access the database on this uh, PHP my admin interface. So in this tutorial, we saw uh, several interesting things. Uh, deploying Portainer on micro K8s using the OpenEBS uh, storage plugin. Also deploying the Metal LB load balancer plugin and the Ingress controller plugin and managing those, and more importantly, via Portainer without writing one single YAML manifest. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for our next how to's. Thank you very much.